Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our time together this morning. We do want to begin a time of prayer by praise, by praising you. As we see in Psalm 2, as the one who is seated upon the throne of the universe, the one who has set your son, your king, our king, on your holy hill, the one who has promised him an inheritance of nations, the one who, who is going to bring about, who has now brought about through his life, death, and resurrection, blessing for all who take refuge in him. And so we want to praise you this morning as the God of all mercy and grace to us in our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to pray for Abel Baptist Church just down the road from us here. We thank you for this church. We want to pray in keeping with Philippians chapter 1 that their love would abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that they may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Even as we would pray that for ourselves, we pray that for our sibling church. Lord, we also want to thank you this morning for uh, the, the servants that are in this church. Obviously, we, we all desire to be servant-hearted as members of this church, and yet we find a passage like 1 Corinthians 16, verse 15, where Paul mentions the household of Stephanus, you know, the first converts in Achaia, and how they, having come to faith in Christ, devoted themselves to the service of the saints. And we have elected servants here, from David to Rob to Walker to Hannah to Nathan to Lisa and Marshall and Corey and Jan and Tiffany and Suzanne and Bronson, our deacons, and Derek and John and George as elders. Lord, these are those who devote themselves to the service of the saints in this body. And so we want to thank you so much for your grace in them and through them to us. We want to pray, Father, that you would forgive us of our sins. Again, we go from week to week and we seek by your Spirit to live in a way that would glorify you, that would be in keeping with the worth of the gospel of Christ. And yet, I think we can be honest and vulnerable here and confess that we have not walked as completely, as entirely, as wholeheartedly with you as we desire as we should, as we see in your word. And so we want to pray that you would forgive us of our sins. We believe that as we confess our sins to you, you are faithful and just because of what Jesus has done for us. To forgive us of our sins and not just to forgive us, but also to cleanse our hearts of unrighteousness so that we can continue to grow in Christ-likeness. We want to pray for all of our ministries this morning. We want to pray for the children's ministry as it gets up and running here next week. Please continue the good work that you're doing through Hannah Johnson. You've given her so much wisdom, so much understanding of your word, so much grace to accomplish this. We thank you for that and we pray that it would just be so fruitful in the lives of the children in this church. We want to pray for the youth ministry as well. We're so thankful for Rob and Walker and for their investment in the lives of, of our youth, our high schoolers. And we just ask, Lord, that you would continue to use them in the days ahead to grow these kids as well. We pray for everything that we're doing, trying to disciple one another, lead one another to Christ's likeness. We have our men's and our women's studies, Father, where we're learning uh, how to be gentle and lowly as Christ is gentle and lowly in heart. We, we want to stand back in all of these times together and just see his heart on full display for, for us and be affected by it, that we would just love him more even as we drive deeper into his love for us. So please continue to work on our hearts and to build us up in him. We want to continue to pray for uh, the pastors, as, we, as we're just mulling over mission and vision and values and statement of faith and church covenant and constitution and bylaws and all these things sort of behind the scenes, but they're prominent in our lives and they're important for this church. And we just want to pray that you would continue to give us wisdom from above to lead this people well. We want to pray for 
our Advent ministry coming up over the next month, starting next Sunday, and we ask, Lord, that you would just be glorified as we seek to preach your word faithfully, to, to lift up uh, the, the truth of the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ and the hope that we have even looking forward to your second Advent, your second coming. And so just please use this time, this season, to save the lost and to build up those that you have found. We want to pray, Lord, for Tiffany. Continue to pray for Tiffany. And also for for Amy's father, uh, Stuart. And also for Stephanie's sister. They're all battling with cancer right now. And so we want to pray for them. And pray for their families. That you would come and show yourself to be, as you say in your word, the God of all comforts. So please come and minister to them. Minister to their bodies. Minister to their hearts in these days. We want to pray for our students, Lord. We thank you so much for, for what we've seen in them this semester. And as they've now kind of finished up the semester, they're going uh, home perhaps over the next month or two. Lord, we want to pray that you would continue to keep them safe. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to, to grow them in Christ. Don't let this be like a two-month hiatus from your word or from prayer or from serious discipleship. We pray, Lord, they would go and come back and be all the more built up in you. We do want to pray continually for our country in these days, Lord, that you would just uh, continue to, to work in the hearts of those who are in leadership. We want to pray that we would, by your sweet providence, be driven towards righteousness as a nation. And we want to pray that you would grant a, a kind of great awakening, even amongst your people, that there would be a, a revival that would lead to the church being the church in this world. We want to pray for any unbelievers who are with us this morning. We ask, Father, that they would not be able to come in and go out and be unaffected by the truth of the gospel, by the reality of Christ, by the facts of grace, and by the power of that that should be so visible in this community of believers. And we do want to pray, Lord. We want to pray for our continuing time of corporate worship as we stand here in a moment to sing again. We come into a time of, of hearing you preach to us through uh, Nathan as he preaches your word to us. As we sing again, as we continue to, to have Christian fellowship on this day, Lord, we do pray that you would meet us in every way, that you would pour out grace from above, the heavens would be rent open and you would come down yourself and that we would be built up in Christ. We would hear your word, not just as the word of men, but as it really is, the word of God. And we would be duly and rightly affected by it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.